genetic engineering is really a radical revolution in food production. It's really a cell invasion technology. You know, people have heard they're taking a flounder gene and putting it in tomato so the tomato can last in, in cold temperatures. But people ask, how does that flounder gene get in that tomato? How does it get in there? And what really happens is the only way you can do it is to invade the cell of the tomato and deposit the flounder gene. Well, what's good at invading cells? Bacteria and viruses. After 12 years of searching, Monsanto found a soil bacteria that is naturally immune to Roundup herbicide. Their goal was to genetically engineer DNA from these bacteria into various plants. They cut out a sequence of DNA that is resistant to Roundup. But if this DNA sequence alone is inserted into a corn plant, it will have no effect. So the next step involves E. coli bacteria. Gaps are created in the E. coli DNA, and when the two test tubes are mixed together, some of the E. coli DNA recombines with the Roundup-resistant bacteria. Then the technicians smuggle the engineered DNA into the cells of the corn plant they want to modify. Cells will naturally reject foreign DNA, so they developed a method using soil bacteria that causes tumors in plants. They use this bacteria to ferry the engineered DNA into the plant's nucleus. There are also two other methods used to get the engineered DNA through the cell wall. One uses a stream of electricity to create tiny holes in the plant cells so they become vulnerable to infiltration by foreign DNA. Another is the gene gun, which blasts particles of gold coated with engineered DNA into the plant cells. Each of these three methods needs a promoter gene that turns on the desired characteristics. The promoter gene is often extracted from the cauliflower mosaic virus. <laughs> 